how far we've come. Hip strength, recovery, and ask Barb at helpmysquashgame.com. Hi, and this is Barb Cooper at helpmysquashgame.com. How far we've come. Check this out. Isn't that ridiculous? Look at that racket and look at those shorts. Um, this book, which is the Guinness Book of Squash by Mike Palmer, has got all the results going way back to the 30s. And you can see that they're just starting to put in an all glass court. Honestly, when you think about where squash is now and how well people are playing and what the technology has done, this is at a time, this book was written at a time when there were no cell phones. Check it out. So now let's deal with hip strength. And what I want you to do is take a simple piece of elastic, you can buy it anywhere, turn it into a continuous loop by tying a knot in it, activate some tension on it, and then work your legs sideways. What you're trying to do is make sure that your hips are engaged. And there's no excuse. You can throw this in your kit bag and you can have it with you wherever you go. Now let's talk a little bit about recovery. We're all recreational squash players, which basically means we're opportunists. We play when we can, not when we have to. So a lot of the time we will play because we have our time in our schedule to be able to do it. That's great. And being squash playing fanatics, we'll play much more than we often do want to. Now, there's a problem. If we play, let's say the whole weekend, and our body's really, really sore on Monday, but it's house league and we love playing house league and we want to go and play, but we know our body's not in position to, to really perform at its best, I'm suggesting you should recover that day and not play. If you keep pushing your body without giving it enough rest, this I can guarantee you, you will get injured. That means you don't play at all. Much better to lose one house league game and rearrange it for another day. So think about it. Make sure that you listen to your body and you find out whether it's reasonable to push your body that day. If not, take a rest and feel good about it. And now it's time for Ask Barb. And I had a great question from Colin about what training should feel like. Now, when you're training, always you're looking at measurables. So whatever you practice and however you practice is how you're going to re receive the result. So when you're training, my recommendation to you is whatever you do, you want to be training harder than you need to play a game. So if you've got a match, the match has got to feel easier to execute than your training. So when you're looking at drilling, your drill should be competitive if that's what you're trying to practice. If you're protect, practicing accuracy, then you're going to practice that accuracy and then constantly up the ante as far as pressure is concerned and still maintain that accuracy. But my recommendation to you is you want to try and practice harder than you would play a game. And the second thing is you cannot do this forever. Your maximum practice time should be no more than 90 minutes. You won't be able to concentrate any longer than that. Anyway, this is Barb Cooper from HelpMySquashGame.com.